So in this video, um, I will be including a link to the to the short video where I got some of this particular information on Joseph and the place around um, uh, Sharkia Government, where this interesting place is. Um, so uh, it was not the nobles who made young Tutankhamun change his name, but the priests. Uh, if that's so, what happened to the nobles? While Egyptian history is dark as to why the nobles disappeared, the Bible is not, and we can find out why in generation, Ge Genesis chapter 47. So, um, this is a bit of a mouthful, so just bear with me. In Genesis 47, 13 through 25, the famine is described in the biblical record. It mentions in verse 13, just after Jacob and his sons had come to Egypt two years into the famine, that there was no bread in all of the land. Verse 14 mentions that Joseph gathered all of the money in the land in exchange for grain or bread. In verse 15, we find that all the money everyone had possessed had, was spent and that all of it had gone for bread. The Egyptians at this point had no money and no bread and they pleaded for bread so that they would not die. In verse 16, Joseph exchanges their cattle for bread. Verse 18 mentions that when another year was, had gone, the Egyptians had no cattle and no bread. The famine, of course, was still ongoing, and by the next year, we find in verse 18 that the Egyptians, uh, I think it's verse 19 actually, were still in dire straits. So dire, in fact, that they were willing to sell not only their land, but themselves. Verse 20 tells us that, that because the famine was so severe, every man of the Egyptians sold his field to Pharaoh. Verse 22 tells us that the priests did not suffer at this point and that they automatically had rations given to them from Pharaoh because they were considered a part of his house. Thus, anything they made or grew could be sold. They were not hungry. They did not have to sell their lands, possessions, or riches, and so naturally the priests became quite wealthy. Not so with the nobles. They had to sell everything, and the famine reduced them to not only commoners, but servants of Pharaoh, as noted in verse 23. But we find no animosity in the words of the people of Egypt, quite the opposite. In verse 25, they explicitly tell Joseph, you have saved our lives. This verse mentions once again that the priests did not become Pharaoh's servants. It makes sense that Pharaoh Amenemhat III would be very pleased with Joseph and that the people of Egypt considered him a hero. It makes sense that Joseph would have been honored with a palace and a pyramid over his tomb and a nine-foot, 280-centimeter statue of him in the entrance of the tomb. Such a large statue of someone who is not a king or a queen is, to my knowledge, unique in the annals of Egyptian history. Using the, flight, the flashlight method, we have been able to answer questions which eludes the efforts of Egyptian history, and we will continue to use this method. Who had the power to influence the young pharaoh Tutankhamun to change his name? Not the nobles. The flashlight method tells us that the nobles were wiped out, and this was in large part due to Joseph. Without the nobles, the only other power center would have been the priests. They had been marginalized by Akhenaten, but they still had power after his death. The priest still had enough power to influence Tukhenaten, Tukhenaten to change his name to Tutankhamun. So, we can say with a healthy amount of certainty that it was the priest who had the power to change the name of the son of Akhenaten to Tutankhamun. Part of Akhenaten's motive in, of changing Egypt from polytheism to monotheism involved curbing the, curbing the growing power of the priest, and Egyptian history bears this out. The fact that they were able to make his son change his name tells us that Akhenaten's concern about their growing power was not for nothing. Where did Akhenaten get the idea for monotheism? We will cover this in a later episode. Akhenaten's birth name was Amenhotep IV. Probably at the behest of the powerful priests of Anmun, Akhenaten was vilified in the succeeding dynasties. Let's check something. Okay. It was the ambition of Akhenaten to control the power of the priests of Amun. More than 450 years before this, it was the ambition of Pharaoh Menemhet III to control the power of the nobles. Joseph, as a faithful servant of God, was able to accomplish this. It is the conclusion of other historians, such as Terry Elfivish, that Pharaoh, the Pharaoh who, Joseph, 
who knew Joseph was Amenemhat III. And using the flashlight method, he is a central hub off of where